uh, live stream, and uh, we can, uh, uh, yeah, and I want to make sure the audio is fine, the audio is great, and uh, I'll also check to see if we're going out uh, here. And uh, we should be, I think. Uh, I have to, however, adjust the uh, uh, the uh, uh, picture here so that people get the uh, screen of that I'm seeing here in the in the studio. Uh, let me. Wait a minute. Who? Who? who oh, oh, wait. Hold on a second. I got to do a few things here, folks. Just hold on. Uh, where, where's the audio on this? Let me turn this off. Let me turn the audio yes. off. Oh, you there got a go. headset, out. Yeah. Uh, Doug's just joining us. Hold on a second, Doug. I'm trying to get this whole thing working. And I Take think time. we've almost got it working here so that it looks good on the screen oh, at Doug. home. There we go. So anyway, I think we're, I think, oh, wait a minute. I got to do one more thing. One more thing. Uh, dee, 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 dee. There we go. And now... Uh, I think we've got ourselves all all set up so that people can go over to live stream and go to uh, Gabnet and uh, and see our uh, our program, v visualize our program, uh, unlike the way you normally do, which is just hear it. And in case you've just joined us, that's David. David's not eating right now. Yeah, I'm getting. What do you I'm got? Oh, you stupid. got a you got a beer. Yes. <laughs> How do you say cheers in uh, in in Prague in Czech? In Czech, nazdraví. So it's kind of not like not uh, like Russian. Nazdraví. Yeah, like in Russian, it's it's it, nazdraví, and in Czech, it's nazdraví. In nazdraví. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, nazdraví. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> there's He's Doug. Wait a minute, Doug. Doug, hold it, hold it up. Let's see what you got there for the TV hey. for the TV people. Uh, that's uh, uh, what kind of Let's beer see. is that? It's ice House. Ice House? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, who makes Ice House? Anybody known or is it a local brand? It's, uh, let me see. No, I mean, it's low. I mean, it's a, it's a domestic brand. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't, you know, I've never been a beer drinker. So no, all I a, know it's is. It's the cheapest beer around. <laughs> is, is it really? It's not quite as cheap as old Milwaukee, though. No, no. Or no. Budweiser. <laughs> old dog piss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I never. I, you know, I, it's fun, funny. Uh, I Excuse never, me a second. I, I gotta talk to wife, but I'll be right back. Okay. I, I never. Uh, uh, we get left with a picture of a racer head there. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but the uh, uh, what I was gonna say is is that I've never been a big beer drinker at all. But I became a beer. Uh, I on a good hot day. If somebody offers me a beer, I will have one. And I have to say, on a hot day, it's pretty damn refreshing, you know? Oh, yeah. I would have took you for a wine person, Alex, like at dinner. No, I don't drink at all. I really no, don't drink I at all. I just on occasion. If you, I thought you would like wine with your meal. Like if you were out having a, like a meal or something, you wouldn't do wine then. No, I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't oh, do okay. wine. No. I, 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 it's, it's lost on me. You know, because I, I don't really like the taste of the stuff. So it gets lost on me pretty much. Um, that's the best I can say about it. <laughs> you know? uh, I'm looking at a race head. Huh? Looking at a race head. He's going to come back. Look. Yeah. You just see a race head, like you said. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, His wife's probably yelling at him right now. Yeah. Hang up the phone. Why don't you ever give us a picture, Tony, and let people oh, see Oh, I have you. a picture. No, you don't. You have. Hold on, I'm going to turn the camera off. Uh, oh, oh, turn it on. There we go. Now we, we accept go. you. It says on. Maybe I have to resync it. Yeah, I. It's it's. Oh, there, you there you are. There he is. For all Look those people watching now. on TV tonight, there's Tony. What? Houdini. You're reading a Houdini book. Yeah, he's great. So, so what? What have you learned about Houdini? Actually, I got to ask you this question, Alex. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think know. I know how he got out of the handcuffs. Huh? I think he's able to pop his wrist somehow. No, actually, I think he actually had a uh, he had a key hidden in his mouth. Really? That's how he did that one? That the handcuff thing is the simplest thing in the world. Because he was always getting out of the handcuffs. How can you do the, that? The, the straight jacket things uh, were it, that he was able to disjoint his, his shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, what I was. But that's still got to be difficult, Alex. In his book, they think he's a double. They think he's hey, a spy. He wasn't. He Houdini wasn't as big as he was because everything was simple, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm going to go to the bathroom. Ta-da! <laughs> nah, you know. I mean, or I'm going to. I'm going to stand up now. Ba -ba -bum -bum. 
It, you know, I mean, it, 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 Houdini was, uh, he was a uh, part, he wasn't as much a magician uh, as he was the escape artist, you know. Okay. Uh, but he did do a magic act to go along with it, I understand. But if you want the true ma magicians, uh, when I was a kid, I loved magic, and I loved magicians, and I was on the, the uh, end days of what we would call the great ma magicians, and one of them was Blackstone. I well, saw Blackstone Jr. perform on Broadway. Well, Blackstone Jr. sucks. He's just terrible. But but the thing you, is, it was the closest I, from an older friend of mine. Well, he had his father's, he had his, all his father's tricks. Yeah, but yeah. it was the closest I got to see what those shows were like, Alex. I'd like to see a magic show. Where was like a, a whole dance song, you know, it was just great. I, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, uh, and then there was a guy by the name of Thurston, who I remember, and Thurston was terrific. And these people would actually come to town with these big shows and big illusions <laughs> And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, however, the great magicians, you know, it's very strange. We think of the great magicians as the great performers. Blackstone was a great performer. And he, so he was, a great, uh, he was a great performer, a magician. But the really true magicians, to me, are the sleight of hand guys. Slidini. Uh, yeah, because... Dale, Dale, Dale Vernon. Be, because yeah. uh, uh, the simple truth... What, do we lose two people now? What happened to David? Doug's off, to, Doug's off talking to his wife, and David went somewhere. Uh, By the end of the show, was... Doug's going to be divorced. Why is, is this? Be... This discussion must be boring tonight if we're having It's a new concept. You just have space there with names and no people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The night we're on the air on <laughs> simulcasting on, on, on live stream <laughs> is the night they choose to go off somewhere and feed the dog. Why didn't let him back on the show and he walks off? Yeah, That's well. A chair and eraser head. Yeah, there's uh, there's Dan. And no, and no camera. Yeah, you're right. It looks like a house. <laughs> huh? That's a nice. David yeah. has a picture of a nice picture. Yeah, we might not hear from Patrick tonight. Oh, what's up with him? He what's and his girlfriend on? broke up. Oh. oh no. So he said he might be oh, depressed, no. and I said, you know, That's come, too bad. Come on, uh, come on the show. You know, yeah, and and vented, yeah. vented here. You know, oh, that'd be great. And I wrote him. I said, "I'll be your Huckleberry." You know, yeah. You know, he. Uh, uh, but it, uh, that's the only way to do it is vent it. Uh, my friend Penn Jillette had the best way of helping you vent breaking up with somebody. Uh, you, uh, I remember once getting a hold of him, and uh, you know, he said, "So what's wrong?" And I said, "My girlfriend just left me," and he said, "I never liked the cunt anyway." <laughs> I, I, I said you didn't know her. He says I know, but that's what you want to hear. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know well, you don't want to hear some guy going, we... "Oh, that's too bad. She, she was so hot." You don't want to yeah. have somebody saying that when you break up. <laughs> that's true. But uh, anyway, no, I remember the great magic. <laughs> boy, this ah, uh, boy, this pollen sucks. Um, when I. When I was in high school, I went out, I dated a uh, German foreign exchange student, and then we broke up, and the whole thing after that with me and my friends was mm -hmm. Nazi bitch from hell. Oh, so, really? <laughs> you, don't break, you don't break up awful. well with people, do you? Well, you know, it was, it was, uh, it just happened. Well, I, I mean, remember, I don't remember all the details at this point. Uh, oh, I was in high school, I'm 40, in my 40s now, but, but uh, Nazi bitch from hell, that was yeah. kind of the tagline that my friends and I, my friends were trying to support me. Yeah. And that was, uh, you know, like I didn't like the cunt either, that kind of thing. She was a Nazi bitch from hell. Well, uh, by the way, we're being joined by <laughs> Rob, uh, who, as you know, now has his own shows here on the weekend. Uh, hi, Rob. How you doing, everyone? Yeah, I you... got my suitcases Hello, here. I'm ready to move in. You're, you're ready to move in? Yeah. Where? Here? Yeah, sure. For the weekend, you know. Oh, for the weekend. Oh, sure. Awesome. sure. Come on up. We got a guest room. Yeah. Come, to, come to New York. We got a guest, we got a guest room. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, my wife makes a great dinner. And, uh, yeah, bring, bring you and your wife up. And uh, you don't have kids, do you? No. Because no. if you did, I'd say leave them home. And... Uh, <laughs> What what's David doing there? He's preparing a sandwich. Oh, David, what are you? A... Uh, okay, now wait a minute. Are you are you eating? Don't don't put. Uh, are you eating, David? Yes. 
Yeah. Okay, now let's all play our game, okay? Oh. And then we'll get back to breaking up with girls because that's a good yeah. women. It's a good topic. Well, I saw, I saw a ketchup. So he, he was putting, I believe it was ketchup on okay. his item. Good and okay. So okay, so you have a hint be, there, right? Yeah. So maybe french fries, but I'm thinking more sandwich. I'm thinking I'm thinking he's be... always he's always a sandwich kind of guy. Okay. And because okay. he's European, uh, he is prone to sausage. I think that's what I was going to go for, sausage. Yeah. So I'm yeah. saying he's having sausage with ketchup. Uh, uh, am I close there, David? Alex, you're the winner. So huh? I'm the winner. There it is. Win. It's a <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> ketchup. It, what kind of sausage is that? It's Polish sausage. Uh huh. Ah, kielbasa. Kielbasa. Uh, mm, don't, don't, don't the Czechs hate That's the me. poles? Well, everybody hates the poles, so you know it doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, we don't hate them. No. Uh, no? Oh, no. Okay. No, we. No, we so like everybody them. hates the Germans and Austrians. <laughs> oh really? Oh okay. Polish people and Czechoslovakian people, we both hate Russians and Germans because they always attack. You know, they always attack us from both sides, you know? Uh, attack you from both sides. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How oh. do you feel about the Ukraine people? I, I, feel, I feel sorry for them because, uh, like, in 1968, Soviet Union occupied Czechoslovakia. So I, I can imagine how Ukrainian people feel, you know? Mm -hmm. I have a friend. Uh, he's actually my office mate who is from the Ukraine, he's uh, probably in his uh, early 50s, and he left the Soviet Union about 25 years ago, when it was still the Soviet Union, and he, and he sounds just like you, the exact same accent. Oh. So how are you guys far away? Is, is Czechoslovakia far from the Ukraine? I don't think oh, so, yeah, right? definitely, yeah. Really? Ukraine is huge. Yeah. 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 What time yeah, and it's actually now you got the Czech Republic, so that's kind of on the western end, if I'm if my yes. geography is correct. Exactly. And Slovakia yeah. is on the uh, eastern end. But by the way, mm -hmm. Tony, he is not in Czechoslovakia. He's no, in, I'm not. He's in Philadelphia. Oh, she's I, in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. I was going to say, what time is it there? Uh, yeah, well, you know. Oh, we... well, Philadelphia, it's 1039. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought you were overseas somewhere. Yeah. Um, um, but, uh, 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 let me see here. We're, we're still having we have no picture from you, Rob, tonight. Uh, what is I noticed problem? that. Um, yeah, it's like it's trying to work, but it hasn't it, yeah, come in. It hasn't kicked in yet. It something. was on right before, you know, I always go to tools, options, and I look to make sure the camera's working, and it was on. Yeah. yeah. And then when I called in, it started with this. It just stopped. So, oh, wow. You know. uh, idiots. Uh, let me see here. How many people we got? One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, no. Why don't you hang up for a second, Rob, and call right back? See if okay. We can get a I don't think that's well. You know, I have, I could reboot. Maybe that's what I should do. You'll reboot. No, I can't. I have too many things open for Gabnet Rewind that I I'm in the middle of. So I, just, I don't. I why don't you just Why don't you just hang up and call right back? I'll try before anybody else does. Okay. okay. Bye. Uh, th that way we can maybe get a picture on them because it, I wouldn't care about any other time, but tonight it's kind of nice that people have pictures. In case you've never seen these people, that's actually the way Doug looks. A lot of people horrible. wonder about that. What? Oh, he's back. Uh, that horrible. That's, that's Ray. Let's see here. Uh, and Ray hey, Renati. Ray Renati is. is joining us. Wait a minute. Oh, oh there wow. he is. Okay, we got you now, Rob. Yeah, see? It's working. There he is, folks. There's Rob. Wave your hands, Rob. That's your there you uh, go. That's and, and that's Doug. Let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, We're nine, full. ten. We're full. And Max is calling from Germany. Who can I uh, get? Who, who would like to go say goodbye for a couple of minutes? I'll say goodbye for a couple of minutes. Okay. Bye okay. bye, Tony. I gotta go check on her anyway in uh, a few minutes. All right. Call back all right. later, okay? I talk to you later, later. Okay. Tony. Uh, let me bring Max in. Uh, hello, Max is in Germany. Hello, Max. Max, Hello? are you there? I'll, I'll take off. I no no. You there, Max? You're on the air. Yeah. Oh hi. Good evening. <laughs> Max, can you hear me? Yes. Oh okay. You're on, you? you're on the air. We got rid of uh, Tony. Say goodbye to give you space to come on. Mm -hmm. uh, Doug has a uh, something he wanted to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, um, yesterday I was telling you about how I posted something on Facebook, and I kind of overlooked Dan because uh, Dan uh, posted the app um, you know, to connect to your uh, yeah. thing there, and a couple people did connect to you. So, uh, you know, shout out to Dan there for oh, you know, okay. allowing the app link. Well, you, you, and you, just like a, didn't, you just didn't type it correctly to put the link, uh, on, you know. My, you well, type slash that. instead of dot. So, I and yeah, I, no problem. It took no time to accomplish, Dead but Meyer. thank you. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to overlook you, but anyway, okay. like this, I'm sorry I had to leave because like uh, there was like a little. I'm not gonna. I can't go into detail, but there was like a little tragedy, you know, involved a killing uh. on my wife's client side there. So that's why I had to leave. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. We understand, uh -huh. Doug. There are emergencies. Uh, yeah. By the way, let's say good evening to Josh, who is, uh, if you're seeing us on the simulcast tonight, and, the, and we only talk about the TV portion of this when we do it, uh, you will notice that Josh is mood lit this evening. It's like Fantastic. you're in shadow, like we're, we're not supposed to know who you are, and we probably yeah. should distort your voice. Because like you look like yesterday. you're in a witness relocation program. Yeah. <laughs> Retaining my anim anonymity. Anonymity, yeah. It's probably safer. Anonymity. Uh, let, let's for a moment uh, get into that topic of, because I, I feel this should be a, a uh, because we don't really have room for him if he were to call right now. And by the way, hello, Ray Renati. How are you this evening? I'm fine. I, I didn't realize the video wouldn't work on the iPad, though. No, it doesn't work on the iPad or the iPhone. Those son of a bitches, right? Yeah, it's just audio. Yeah. Probably should yeah. find another system, but well, this one <laughs> will work for the moment. But anyway, okay. uh, uh, Patrick uh, and his girlfriend broke up, uh, and uh, uh, I, I would I would like to make him feel better, okay? And and um, as I said, you know, Penn Jillette once said to me when I broke up with somebody uh, with uh, with somebody, well, I never liked the cunt anyway, and. and <laughs> And 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 he's and I said, why do you say that? You know, I'm, I'm, next week I might be back with her, and you just called her a cunt. And he said, because you don't want me to say, gee, why did you break up with her? She's such a good-looking, hot woman. You know, you don't want to hear that. You want to hear, I never liked the cunt anyway. So then, it reminded me of a story when I was uh, I my second wife and I broke up. Well, she decided to leave me. Are you ready for this? Hold on, everybody. This is wonderful stuff. She decided to leave me for Troy Donahue. Oh, oh my Remember gosh. Troy Donahue? Name. Huh? Yeah. The yeah. actor? Troy Donahue? Yeah. yeah. Really? Troy was uh, a good friend of mine, and I felt his ultimate act of being a good friend of mine was he, he, he my wife left hit me for him uh, wow. because uh, it wasn't working out that well anyway. But anyway, I felt... <laughs> that I should feel sorry about this. I can't say that I was totally distraught, all right? The only thing I was distraught about is you, divorces are always messy, you know? Okay. They're, never, they're never clean on any level. And uh, so I decided I better be depressed. So my friend Pat Skye was playing down at a, uh, uh, at a nightclub in, in Manhattan, at a, at a folk club in Manhattan, along with his pal, Dave Van Ronk. I don't know how many of you remember Dave Van Ronk. And each of them decided that because I was in such a bad way, because I'm going, oh, my God, my wife left me. I'm playing it for everything I've got because I don't want to feel guilty about the fact that I really don't give a shit, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so so um, uh, I, get, I, 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 I go down there, and, and Van Ronk says, what's happening, kid? And I said, uh, my wife just left me. And he says, okay, here's what we're going to do. You're going to go to the bar next door. <laughs> he said, and uh, I'm going to have to do my act. And Pat will sit, babysit you, okay? And we'll just keep feeding you beers all night and drinks and, 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 and consoling you. So uh, Pat, and then when I'm off, Pat will leave and I'll sit there with you. So alternately, they would alternate back and forth all night long, coming and sitting with me. And I do remember the greatest piece of advice I got was from Dave Van Ronk. And I said, he said, so, so what happened? And I said, well, you know, she kind of left me for another guy, and uh, it wasn't working out that well anyway, and, uh, you know, and... 
and it's just not that good. And he, he said, uh, I, he said, well, I have advice for you. I said, what's the advice? He says, go home and kick her in the cunt. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. That is the best advice I ever got from anybody about how to handle a relationship. <laughs> oh, I hope Max White and doesn't it, and hear it this. It couldn't have worked without that voice. Though. Could be great foreplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, great foreplay, <laughs> right? Um, uh, I hope she doesn't listen to this because we do get along now. And if she hears me telling this story, we're probably back to the way we were the night I was told to kick her in the cunt. Um, <laughs> But uh, that's that's in my story. So now, what I thought we'd do is a little therapy for Patrick, who I know is watching, and and listening. Oh, Jim, Jim, I can't put you on because trying, trying oh, one, beard. two, three, four, five, I'll, six, I'll seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. I know he tried to get on yesterday, so I had oh, no problem getting oh, off. Oh, you name okay. Uh, are you yeah, same you, here. You, uh, who, who said same here? Uh, Max? Max. Okay, Max. So let's say goodbye to you because you you know, you sound kind of quiet tonight. But give us a call back. We we're wondering where you were. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, let's go to uh, Jim. Hello, Jim. You there? Oh uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, we made room for you at the. Oh, there's room at the at the table here. Thanks. Yeah, I hate that uh, that uh, that uh, limit. You know, then everybody freezes up and we don't get a picture. <laughs> and on any other night, I might not care as much as I do tonight because. Oh. We're doing the TV thing. Anyway, we lost David again. He's off getting another sandwich or something. <laughs> anyway, so what I thought we do? What, what I thought we do since we have a we have a full house right There's now. Jim. We have a Wait a minute, house. Jim. Philadelphia Flyers jersey, hockey jersey. <laughs> I know, but I'm a Rangers fan. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess I wore it for David tonight. <laughs> I'm Charlestown Chiefs. Really? What's that? Anyway, slap shot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, slap shot. Well, my favorite movie. Got to put on the foil, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the road. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I well, let me get back to the premise here. I'm trying to set up a premise. And by the way, do you notice Josh? He looks like he's in the witness protection program. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, know, I looks like Patrick from last night. Huh? So he looks like Patrick from last night. You see, for the people Josh, on TV, I think I can actually go in on him. There we go. And Josh, this, it have, look at uh, Josh, Zither look music at playing in the background. And all night long, uh, Josh, you, you should talk like, uh, yes, uh, I, uh, I was with the mob at one time. <laughs> I was. Huh? I was. <laughs> Anyway, go back to everybody else here. Uh, but the Amish Mafia? Huh? Yeah, the uh, Amish, Amish Mafia. Mafia. Yeah. Uh, I can uh, I can wrap a dead guy in carpet with the best of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the premise. We got Patrick out there. I know he's listening. And I feel sorry for him. You know, breaking up with somebody is never an easy or wonderful yeah. thing, right? How long were they together? Do you know? Huh? How long were they together? Do you know? Uh, not. I don't think that long. Uh, I seem to remember him being with another woman uh, about a year ago or something like that. Well, he's he's gonna bounce right back. You know, he gets he gets a player. Like that. You know something? That guy is a player, and I admire that. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, know. You know something? I'll I'll tell you, and not to take anything away from Patrick, but I went to when I went to college. I went to Wright State University in Dayton, Ohio, yeah. which is known for its its accessibility. And I had a lot of friends in wheelchairs and and par through paralysis or spina bifida or whatever. Those guys were chick magnets, man, chick magnets. You mean, you, 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 you and, mean, in other words, and for, me, worked, for me to get and laid. Those guys worked for, it for everything they got. For me and to get, rightfully so. Why not, right? For me to get laid, I have to go out and sever my spine. Is that what I have to do? Pretty Should much, yeah. That's, well, yeah. no, Alex, you can also lick your eyebrows, and that'll, that'll work well. <laughs> that, that'll work, too. I see, Rick. Thank you very much, Rick. Now, here's the deal. So I know he's out there, and I, I just want to make him feel better. So I thought we'd go around the group here and see if we could get some good, solid breakup stories, miserable breakup stories. Um, anybody have any miserable breakup stories? Oh, come on. Oh, okay, Rick. 
Rick. So many. My first marriage. Your first was, was pretty, yeah. pretty lousy there for the last couple of years. And I was going for marriage counseling. I couldn't get the ex to go with me. So we did that for two years. And uh, yeah. I kept hoping that she'd say, it's time to end this thing. Because for whatever reason, I was a gutless wonder and couldn't do it myself and just say, that's it. So finally, we did it. And um, the crushing thing was leaving the dog. I, I I cried like a baby holding the dog before I walked out the door for the last time. Oh, you, in other words, you you minded losing the dog, but not the bitch. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, Mark, you've got to have Goodness. had a terrible breakup story. Come on. I shouldn't really put it out there because this person is <laughs> still around, but I had to have still the cops. Hard. You had to what? I had to have the cops called to remove oh. this. Really? Yeah. This person, I didn't realize it was on heavy medication. <laughs> she, she was addicted <laughs> to prescription drugs. And she went nuts on me. And she physically attacked me. And um, I had to have, I had to get the police to remove her. So... And, and you know, did she... I figure if you get past 50, you're not going to get crazy people in your life. Oh, boy. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I've gotten crazy ones. Uh, I'm living with one right now. <laughs> um, not, uh, I'm only... Alex, careful. The door behind you is open. <laughs> I'm only... And your back is to it. I'm only kidding, dear. <laughs> um, uh, Rob? Um, I, I can't, I have some crazy stories, but they're not necessarily breakup stories. They're stories about, I mean, you've been in radio for a long time. I've had stories of being stalked. I've had stories of being, um, you know, women stalking me where I was dating this woman and she was following around this woman that I was dating. And she had told her that, um, she, she, she ran into, so I, I'm, I, uh, this woman goes to uh, this woman I'm dating goes to J.C. Penney's to buy something at her lunch hour, and she said to me, "You know, I met this nice girl, and we were talking, blah blah blah." And uh, it turns out that from that moment, that meeting at J.C. Penney's, she got her name and address and everything off of her somehow, and she she was following her all over the place, and could, and she pulled her over one day and said, "Leave my boyfriend alone. We've been going out now for six months." So she calls me in a, like, how dare you? You're telling me. I'm like, what are you talking about? It turns out this woman who had been listening to me at the, at the radio station was telling everybody that we've been going out for a long time. I had to actually get the cops on Misty her. For me? I had to actually get the cops on her. Yeah. So because she, she started sending me, when I, when I finally told her to knock it off, she went from being sweet in email to being really vulgar and nasty in email. And I used to, when I was working at Court TV, I had said it in a joking way to one of the attorneys, and he said, "Dude, go to the police and file a report because if she says she was raped by you, you got big problems." Yeah, right. So I, I took the preemptive strike and I went to the police. I sent them, I gave them all the emails and stuff. But uh, in the end, I sent her one final email saying, "Okay, everything you've sent me is now at the police. Your move." And I never heard from her again. But she was stalking her. She was stalking me. She knew where I was. She knew where this woman was the following weekend prior. Followed her into New York City. Just crazy stuff. Wow. But not necessarily breakup stories. By the way, let me just mention Portland. Dave just tried to call us. And Portland, I couldn't pick up the uh, call because, and there he is again, because I've got all the people right now that I can have on at one time. So a little bit later, if somebody drops off or whatever, uh, you'd be welcome to join us. Um, I, I hate to turn people down. Jeez, that's amazing. Uh -huh. um, what's interesting is that uh, I, I, we do have some people on the TV tonight, not as many as we did last week, but I want to say to all the people there that what you're watching is what we call our <laughs> Citizens Panel, and this is an audio show we do every day, Monday through Friday at 10 o'clock, and it's, uh, it's on a thing called GabNet. Go to gabroadcaster.com, gabroadcaster.com. I hope we pick up a few more people. But the combination between the radio listeners and the TV listeners is the same identical number that we usually have here. So I'm not <laughs> feeling that bad about it. Just lower listening on the radio side, then there's the listening on the TV side. Uh, Doug. 
Yeah, I just want to say from the story so far, I mean, they're all you know pretty bad and everything. I think Rob is number one right now. Rob is number one so far. Yeah, I mean, my God, having somebody, a uh, crazy person stalking you and you have to call the cops and everything else. So uh, that's, that's just Marcus my opinion. I'm not, you know, I know, you know, listen, Mark no, that, that, and, you know, well, Rick having to go through, you know, counseling and all that. But I mean, but this sort of like when you have a, it just reminds me of that movie, uh, Play Misty for well, Wait a minute, Mar wasn't Mark the one that had the, uh, the, uh, the, the person they had to get the cops to come take away? Yeah. Yeah. That was Mark. Yeah. Well, I, I, listen, I'm saying, you're going to tell me, Doug. Just, you're going to tell. Yeah, you're going to tell me. Just my opinion. You're going to tell me, Doug. Like, that, uh, you're going to tell me, Doug. Slightly in the lead. Doug, you're not going to tell me you don't have a uh, a horrible story. Well, fortunately for me, somehow with all my flaws and everything, my wife is still with me after 30 years, oh. well, 30 plus years. I, the only thing I can think of is like just you know shit from high school or you know my young 20s. But pretty much like when I was dating you know people then you know. I, I did the chicken shit thing. I quit calling people up. <laughs> I quit calling them up. Just, that was my way of breaking up. Oh, you were the bad date. You see, I was the good date. I was always the good date. No matter how bad the date was, I would call the woman the next day and thank her. Wow. Oh, no. I, I dated, That's like, girls like for, like, months or so, and all of a sudden, it was like, eh, nah, I found somebody else. So I'll just quit calling. They, they would call me up. I would never answer the phone and all that, which I would admit is the dick thing to Can do. I, yeah, you're an asshole. Yeah, You're oh, I'll be the first asshole. to admit that. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> Hell, everybody on his panel knows that. I think anyway. I have a new name for you. You're known. I am. You're, uh, it's, it's your badge of honor. Yeah, I, have, I think I have yeah, a new I name. Frank Zappa had a song after me, um, Broken Hearts for Assholes. And, you know, I, I like think that. I have a new name for you, Super Dickwad. <laughs> that's appropriate. Because, I mean, uh, that, I'll the, accept that. that's a dickwad kind of thing to do. I could never do that. In fact, I found well, it very, I, I went oh. with women long after I should have broken up with them because I couldn't bring myself oh. to break up with them. I didn't want to hurt their feelings. Yeah. But what's amazing, though, is like with this Facebook thing, mm -hmm. I'll send these like girls that, you know, it was like, wow, she's on Facebook. I'll send them a Facebook request and they accept my request. Wow. I'll tell you something. I had this uh, 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 woman I knew. Uh, I got to tell you, this, this is the strangest ever. Uh, there was this woman I knew, and she wasn't unattractive at all, but she was l crazy. She was batshit crazy, all right? But somehow, and I don't know what it was, and I don't know if any of you have had this experience with women in your lifetime, but... Whenever I got within proximity of her, there was some kind of musk or something that she exuded uh -huh. that immediately <laughs> gave me an erection and I couldn't yes. stop from jumping her bones, knowing yes. all along if I did, I was going to have to pay dearly for it when it was over with. Yes. Oh, I'm getting a lot of yeses here. I, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, well, who? who? It's me. It's, it's like Ray, there, was, there, was this, there was this girl... Uh, Back in Chicago. Yeah. And, you know, sh and it wasn't really crazy, but it was just somebody that was like, I got to get rid of this person. But then I see her and she dresses so nice and she's so hot. It's like, I can't, I'm powerless. I'm hypnotized. I, I'm, 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 uh, you know, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, I just couldn't keep you my know? hands off of her. And then yes. after it was over mm -hmm. with, then I had hell to pay because now, yeah. now all of a sudden it was, do you love me? You know, and mm -hmm. all this other crazy bad shit. No, I just, I, you know, and, and in, in the sack, I got to tell you, I mean, she, she was as good as anybody that I can remember. Uh, yeah. um, I mean, she, she had little tricks she liked to do like gargle. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway. <laughs> now, what was the strange thing about her? is she kept saying she was sick and that she wasn't going to live very much longer and that she had this cancer or that cancer. And I kept getting this every time I tried to have nothing to do with her. In fact, you know, I've told the story on the air about how I was raped and everybody used to give me a bad time about it. She was the one who did it because I would, I'd broke, just broken up with another girlfriend. She comes over. She says, can I spend the night? I don't want to have to drive back down to San Jose. I go, okay. She says, you mind if I sleep in the same bed with you? And I said, that's okay, too. 
just, you know, nothing because I really am depressed and I don't feel like having sex tonight. Your pheromones aren't working right now. And, and just, you know, stay on your side of the bed and all will be wonderful. Middle of the night, I wake up, she's fucking me. You know, because... Why, you're asleep? Well, I mean, erect, er, erections are, are, you know, we have no control yeah. over those things. Women, Morning, when, night, when uh, I tell this night, story to women, they don't believe me. Like, how do you get an erection? Well, you, you're a guy. You get an erection. You guys get erections when they don't want to fuck. You know, because it, 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 it's some kind of will to fail or something like that. But... Anyway, she kept saying how sick she was and that she was dying. Oh. And that, and she went into the hospital for these uh, tests for uh, various things and so on. It, she kept telling me, I've only got like a year left. I'm going to be dead. Oh. And I went, well, that's that's too bad, but I'm still not going to <laughs> fuck you. You're not coming up here anymore. My first question would have been, is it contagious? That was... <laughs> oh. By the way, that that was 20 years ago. I heard from her a couple of weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> so she never died. They found the cure. You know, I figured when I didn't hear from her for a while, hey, maybe she's dead and I'll never have to deal with it again. But but she's still alive. And I often, if she ever, I often wanted to write back and go, so how sick were you really? You know. Well, but uh, Alex, uh, I'll be back in a second. If somebody calls in, you want to cut me off? That's fine. So okay. okay. All All right. Right. the little boys were in there. Okay, well, go do it. He's been very good, hasn't he, guys? He's yes. been terrific. He's, 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 he's been behaving this. nicely. I think the video helps. Ray Renati, you've been so very quiet there, Ray. Yes. Yeah, we, you know, and it's because you haven't jumped in, I forgot you were there, and then I thought maybe I should get rid of Ray because, you know, he's not talking. So we're going to involve you here. What, tell us what happened, ever happened to you. Did you ever oh, have a bad breakup? Come on, Patrick is listening. He needs you to make him feel better. Well, let's see. When I was 20, my girlfriend got pregnant. Yeah. And um, had an abortion. And then it was all downhill from there for like another 15 years. And then another woman I went to. Wait, wait, to wait, 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 wait. She had an abortion. And then what did you do? Did you marry her? No. No, but we were like, oh, it was just, it was just screwed up. You know, hey, but you kept going 20. with her for 15 years. Yeah, back and forth. Well, I, I can't exactly fault you. I went <laughs> with someone for about 11 years that came to nothing you yeah know? so um and, and then i had another one that tried to kill herself and was in the icu for two weeks mm -hmm. oh god yeah we took a overdose of her daughter's medicine mm -hmm. oh god uh, yeah, and then, the, how do you break up after that you were stuck with i, I that didn't point. but it kind of kind of went downhill after that well who, yeah. who was the politician that uh, told his wife he was leaving her uh while she was dying in the hospital newt gingrich newt gingrich yeah 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 good good old newt and his girlfriend was up in the living up in one of the rooms in the houses oh really in the, that's yeah, it yeah yeah up, up, upstairs while the wife was dying yeah son of a bitch <laughs> son of a bitch uh, uh, let me see here. Who else? Uh, boy, there's some. Well, that's the family values, uh, New Gingrich. There. Yeah. Let me just turn the sound down on you guys for a second here. Bring it back up and see if the. Oh no! Yeah, wait. That was that was uh, Giuliani. I got it mixed up. Sorry but about it, that. Was it? No. Sure. Wait. Was it? No. Well, no. Giuliani also che was cheating on his wife, but it was Gingrich whose wife was dying. In the, in well, the she area. never. Right. She didn't that's die right. though, did she? No, I don't think she did. Yeah, she was still alive a few years ago. But no, he was he was famous for having done that, which is yeah. again, you know, we can name him President Dick Wad or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. Jim, I can't imagine you've ever had any problem with women. I've had obviously I've had exes, and and the interesting thing is, uh, they all have. They're never referred to by their names. They all have nicknames, sort of. So when we talk, if they ever come up in conversation, I mean, my wife and I know who I'm talking about. There was the doily queen. <laughs> what? Well, she put, like, the doilies doily. on everything, like on the arms of the sofa. There were, and there were underneath <laughs> ashtrays. She made doilies, and there was, like, doilies everywhere. And then, and then there was the hell bitch. And and then sort of the last one we ever talk about, is, uh, I call I called her death from above. 
<laughs> because I'm six foot tall, and and she was like six three, and so I, I mean, and then she'd put on heels, and then I'd have to put on heels, and you know, so no, I mean, the only real problem I ever, I only had one problem. And I solved it easily enough. I was living in uh, northern British Columbia mm -hmm. in a mobile home. Yeah. And the best thing I did was just to call a friend uh, with a uh, with a big uh, trailer hauling truck. And I actually moved the trailer somewhere else. So when she showed up to see if I was home, it was just a big empty lot. Yeah. Like the actual the actual mobile home was gone. And I've never saw, seen her again. But you don't know. No, it's just you know, I. I mean, I, Teresa and I have been together for what now, twenty two years. So yeah. So yeah. you so can you, your house. So you can you, my house. You, yes. Yeah. I mean, you can you can sit around and reminisce about death from above. Well, yeah. death. Yeah. She was English too, and and uh, you no, know, but she was tall. I never dated anybody who was taller than I am. I mean, my wife is five foot. Uh, I had uh, a girl, a woman. We, uh, we, she referred to herself, and I, so I referred to her that way, as Schmoody. And Schmoody was a UPS driver. Ah, uh, right. I remember. Uh, yeah, you, you remember her? Yeah. I, I remember. remember Schmoody, Alex. I remember that. Yeah, six foot one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she was taller than I was, and I usually don't like tall women. I like my women kind of on the short side, five three and below. I start really getting tumescent. And uh, uh, <laughs> well, I'm, but, I'm kind of the same way. And, and I like I like the, I, I like, I like brun well I like petite ones because they make everything you have look bigger. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, but true. It, in in any event, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 in any event, uh, Schmoody was also a blonde, and I'm traditionally a, a lover of brunettes. So here I am with this this six foot tall Amazon, who's a blonde, who by the way also she had breast cancer, so she had them rebuilt up, and the doctor said how big would you like them, and she said really big. So on top of everything else, she had these huge breasts, you know. Um, and but I got to tell you, I, she's one of the best dates, best women I ever went with because. Forget about anything else. She was one of the guys, you know. I mean, she would fart in the car, and uh, she would uh, she she do all kinds of things, and she was just a lot of fun to be with. And it wasn't so much the sex or anything else. It was there was a person that I just enjoyed being with, you know, and was a good friend. Um, but uh, so I, to this day, I call her Schmoody, but I haven't seen her in a long time been a long time on that one but um i also liked it because you know like when i as i said the other day when i moved upstairs once uh, she could carry the 32 inch <laughs> television set because you know those ups people know how to carry stuff so uh, um she comes with her own hand truck let me let me go to uh today doug although he has no sad stories because he's well these sad stories have been married to the same person for 30 years i'm a boring person no, I was going to say, I mean, I've taken some breaks here and there. But, like, Josh has, like, been unusually quiet. And with him being in the dark kind of reminds me from him, like, being Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now. <laughs> you know, he's, horror. like, in the dark, and all of a sudden he gets in the light. So, Josh, move over to your right a little bit, you know, and, you know into the light, you know, and I forgot what the line is was. It, but anyway, is, but no, Josh has been quiet. Is, there's, is, is, is there a reason? Afraid. Is Josh reflecting on his dating days of Betsy Ross. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, that would be a good question for Josh. Of all the people you've read about in history, what woman would you have liked to have had a relationship with? Well, George Goodwin. I don't know. Dolly that's, Madison, because uh, she made great cookies and cakes. Maybe. Yeah. That's. I'd really have to think about that one. I, th I think John Adams' wife was pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, I like Laura Linney. But yeah, yeah. You, there you go, Laura Linney. <laughs> Well, she she played uh, Mrs. Adams in the in she the. She played Jonathan. his wife in the miniseries. Yeah. Laura Linney. Uh, but, but she he was uh, um, uh, but I uh, I we haven't asked you, uh, Josh. Uh, any bad relationships you want to talk about? Bad breakups? Um, not really. Not in particular. I mean, I did have one uh, 
I did have one girl hit me one time on and uh hit you yeah and uh she had nails and it cut my face open real bad there but, you go. Well, that's a good story and of Whatever. course you're a gentleman you're a gentleman and you wouldn't hit her hit her back right um i wouldn't <laughs> say that oh okay <laughs> She hits me again. I said, yeah, go right ahead. That'd be the last fucking thing you ever remember. So that was pretty much the end of that deal. We were at work, too. I ended up quitting and moving to Florida. So Oh, the other one, the one about this woman I was ta telling about that was crazy. Uh, occasionally, she would try to hit me. And I would, like, grab her hand as she went to hit me. And, then, of course, she'd kind of wrench it slightly because I grabbed her hand, which was <laughs> trying to hit me. And she'd say, you brute, you just hurt my arm. Yeah, I used to that's get that the same one thing too. That happened there. Yep. Oh, oh, Mark you know, is going. Yeah, you know that right one. Man. You know that that's, one, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. poor me. You're such a brute. I got smacked in the face once by a woman. It was in in front of about ten people. We were all standing in a semicircle outside of this nightclub I was working at. Yeah. And I was, I just, I had been fed up with her. I just, she was one of these women that you know she would constantly put herself in front of you, and I wasn't interested. And this went on for months and months and months. And I used to, find, to to get rid of her, I would say things that I would never say to any other woman. And I said, <laughs> I said, you're, you know, you're a, yeah, well, you're just a spoiled bitch or something like that to her. And she hauled off and she smacked me in the face in front of everybody. And it was like, it's like getting an electric shock. And I just grabbed her wrist with my hand. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her and there was fire in my eyes. And I just said, you are just so lucky. I was shaking. I said, just don't ever try that again. And I, I, you could see the look of terror in her eyes that she realized she made a mistake. So I, I know what it's like to get smacked in the face. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, listen, listen, Ray, could I do, could I, could you do us a favor? Since uh, yeah. we have somebody trying to get in who really sure. does want to talk, could we, uh, could we say goodbye to you? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ray. Yeah. Bye bye. You bet. Good night, Ray. Ray hadn't said much tonight. Uh, uh, if there, there's a couple other people that have been trying to get in, uh, one of which is Portland Dave, and I think I saw Miranda out there lurking about. Or at least I got some kind of message from her. But you know the trouble with Skype is these messages fly in and then they fly right out again, and you don't have time to read them. So I, um, I don't know. But anyway, uh, uh, Rick, were you saying something? I'm sorry. I shut my I'm shut my mic off. You know, if you're jammed up, I'll I'll. No, no, off. we're fine. We're fine. We and uh, now we'll see if, if Dave does give us a call. Anyway, um, uh, what I was going to say, I guess. Uh, let me see here. Who haven't we talked to about this? Oh, we, oh, we haven't talked to David. Oh, tell us about some <laughs> canceled checks. <laughs> canceled <laughs> checks. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> well. Bad relationship, bad breakup. Oh, I, I, I really don't have, I don't have any bad breakup, and uh, I'm happily married. So I really. I think he's taking the fifth, don't you guys? I think his wife is so. standing next to him with a shotgun. <laughs> 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 and there's your cat. Yeah, okay. nice cat. See, on TV night, which is usually Friday night. If people want to show and tell, we don't mind. Um, you know, I got to tell you, I guess the, and I guess this will make Patrick uh, uh, somewhat. Uh, I don't know. The word isn't happy, but I'm, we're trying to console him and make him realize he's not alone in this world. That people do break up with people, and uh, some of them are pretty disgusting. But I had this one girlfriend for 11 years, and in those 11 years, we broke up 11 times. Oh, and, those. And, annual event? Huh? An annual event? Uh, actually, there was a 12th time with a 10-year space between the two. <laughs> okay? Wow. But for the first 11 years, there were 11 breakups. And it was, it was, uh, I mean, each time she figured out a new way to make it worse than the last time. Ooh. And, and one of the best ones was, is that we broke up. And all of a sudden, one night, we got back together again. All right? And I'm happy as hell. And we're having a wonderful time. One week later, she breaks up with me again. She uh. makes me feel good for a while. And then she just, 
And then the last one, she waited 10 years, and we met up again. We went, well, you know, it's got to be better this time, right? After 10 years, what can go wrong? She broke up with me again. I mean, it was just <laughs> devastating, just devastating. And I was, I'm really, Patrick, I was as, I can't imagine how bad you feel right now or how bad you felt in the past, but you can't feel as bad as I did the last time I broke up with this person. But anyway, Portland Dave is with us. Hello, Portland. Hello, Portland. I feel like Fred Allen. Hello, Portland. That Portland's in Boise right now. Oh, I'm finishing oh. up my uh, business trip. Well, Boise's will be Boise's. Uh, do you have a story for us? Yeah. Uh, when I went to UCLA, yeah. I had a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. We started going out the end of our freshman year, mm -hmm. and we dated for about three and a half years. We had different personalities. I liked to smoke pot. She liked to go to the bars and drink. Mm -hmm. And what would happen is she would go to the bar and drink, and I'd have no problem with that. She'd socialize with guys, with her girlfriends, no problem. Mm -hmm. I'd go hang out with my buddies, and all we basically do is smoke some, some weed and every time she'd come back drunk and accuse me of having cheated on her while she was at the bar. So I oh. finally had enough of it one night and tried to break up with her, and she went to the kitchen and grabbed a knife and chased Damn. me around the apartment. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. I hope you managed to avoid the knife. I avoided the knife, and mm -hmm. I decided at that point I will never date or marry a woman who really likes to drink or carries knives well i don't know i'm in the re i was in the restaurant business so i tend to always have a nice set of knives around yeah <laughs> oh boy <laughs> hmm. wow. i just wanted to say okay. yeah what were you going to say jim well i just you were talking about breaking up and getting back together and breaking up i just wanted to say that being an, uh, a, a bystander to one of those things can be just as traumatic. Uh, I was in a, 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 a bar uh, here in British Columbia uh, years ago, and this guy and this girl were arguing, and, and, I, and I thought they are in some form of breakup mode. And at one point, he reached over, and he grabbed her wrist, and he just kind of reefed on it, and, like, she screamed. And I thought, okay, I'm, I'm a stranger here, but... I got to say something. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wandered over and I said, hey, you know, let's let's kind of calm down here. How about how about I buy you a drink and, and everybody takes their hands off of everybody and, you know, and, and that's fine. And and I mean, we're standing up and this guy kind of just looming over me and, and with a fist, he hit me in the center of the chest so hard. It's like the wind just left my lungs and the first thing I could think of was oh I I have to hit back and it, one of the few times I've actually hit somebody I just hauled off and I hit him in the nose as hard as I could and at at the time I hit his nose it went sort of to the side of his face and at the same time my hand exploded and I broke every single metal carpal in my hand wow. and, and he oh went to God. the ground he went to the ground. My hand is like swelling. He went to the ground, nose bloody. And the first thing she does is like hauls off and hits me and, <laughs> and, and falls to her knees and grabs him. And like, she's, oh my God, you're hurt. You're hurt. And it's like, you're welcome. Yo, know, my hand is. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, this is. Thanks this, for nothing. And off they went. And I guess I, I had interrupted a courting ritual of theirs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so this place was so remote, uh, I wasn't able to leave town till the next day and then drive five hours to a hospital. And yeah, I had uh, they had to admit me. I had broken every single metacarpal, and they had to put me in surgery and put them all back together. And... Uh, and that's so yeah, now I now I just let people fight. Yeah, I guess to, like, yeah. Don't fight for somebody. Why cops hate domestic disputes. Oh, yeah, no they, they say they're the worst. They oh, say yeah. they're the absolutely the Definitely. worst. You know what I figure we could do for the TV people? Uh, I could bring up a logo here. Here we go, and I could move it into the picture over you guys, 
and say this is the great, well, uh, uh, Rob, why don't you say this is the Great American Broadcast Network? I can. This is the Great American Broadcast Network, GabNet. And what are they listening to, Rob? This is Alex Bennett's Nighttime Ramble. Mm -hmm. And when can they usually hear the Nighttime Ramble? <laughs> Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern, only uh, on GabNet. Uh, see, you got that <laughs> yeah, only excellent. on GabNet. Uh, Good job. And, 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 and what other fine programs do we have on this here network? Oh, we've got Revel Stoke Jim coming up at midnight. That would Eastern. be this uh, charming young man right here. Hey. <laughs> Rebel Stoke Jim's Canadian content. Yeah. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at midnight Eastern. Yeah. And, uh, and Albert's Public House, Monday through Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then, of course, over the weekend, they can hear the best of all these programs on Rob Alfano's uh, uh, Gabnet Gab Rewind. Gabnet Rewind, excuse me. Uh, there are three editions. And David's future show. You ought to give David a show. That guy has so oh. much personality. You got to give him a show. Who? Oh. You. Oh, David. David. Oh. I I, I yeah. don't think he'd even be able to, to turn on a camera. I mean, I just, it's a problem. <laughs> anyway, that's a great American. It's hilarious. It, it I, I, I I love Dave. Okay, I, I, let's finish it off with uh, Great American Broadcast Network one more time, Rob. This is the Great American Broadcast Network. Okay, and then I can get rid of the. I see, I put a picture up in front of you. It was a great deal. I, it's just, <laughs> I'm so I'm so getting so good at the, the TV part of this. Uh, but anyway, the, you go to gabroadcaster.com. By the way, you can see all the stuff, listen to all the shows and everything. And that's for the TV people who are listening to us now, who may not uh, have experienced the program before the programs before. Yes, David. Uh, I got a question for everybody. What do you think? The best movie about breaking up. Oh, <laughs> oh, great movies about breaking oh. up. Uh, well, I mean, Greece, huh? Godfather Two. Uh, <laughs> Godfather Two. Yes. Godfather Two. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 really sore guy. Uh, I, uh, I'll tell you what I think is the best one: Modern Romance by Albert Brooks. In which they break up, they get back together again, they break up, they get back together again, they break up. Finally, at the end of the movie, they get back together again, and they break up. And that's yeah, the end of the Greece movie. Better. I mean, when John Travolta breaks up with the Living Newton John, and Living Newton John comes back in that sprayed on leather outfit saying, You're the one I want. I mean, yes. come on. Nah, I mean, uh. that, that's not a great breakup <laughs> movie. They you know, make up uh, a bit. David? Oh, I'm so yeah. sick of for, Greece. For me, it's Woody Allen's Manhattan. Ah, oh, very good. Very, very good. good one. Yeah. And I That's knew he was nice. going out with young girls. You know how yes. I knew? Because I was going out with a young girl at one point who told me she was 18. That's all I'll say. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then I come to find out uh, that she actually was 17, about to become 18. And I immediately oh. called my lawyer and said, what do I do? And he said, when is her birthday? And I said, next Thursday. And he said, forget it. You're, you're home right. free. <laughs> but I, I, because I had the relationship with this girl, she always had that simplicity. You know, that, that at, at that age, there's a certain lack of sophistication that gives her a much more sophisticated look at the world. You know what I'm saying? Just like the Mariel Hemingway character was in that picture. I mean, out of all these fancy schmancy New York people and their literary types and their intellectualness and all of that, her philosophy is so simple. You know, at the end of the movie, the last line to him is, sometimes you just got to trust people. You know, and uh, I just said to myself, he went out with a young woman. He could not yeah. have written this screenplay unless he went out with a young woman. And I and, never understood as a child why my mom did not like Woody Allen movies. And then it ends up my dad was just a prolific cheater with young women from uh, the defense industry. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, very interesting. I, I just, you know, yeah. I, I, I just couldn't understand why my mom was so adamant and Anytime a Woody Allen movie would come on, my dad and I would watch it, and my mom immediately would grab her book and go upstairs and read and pout the rest of the evening. How about you, Josh? Romantic movie that, uh, you know, 
I can't think of one. You can't? I don't really no, nah, I don't really care for those movies typically. The whole uh Jennifer Aniston's making the same well, movie minute, she's well, made well, 15 you know. times. They just changed the name type of well, deal. Maybe, maybe then for you, the most romantic <laughs> movie you've seen with a with a sad ending is uh, Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. <laughs> that was a breakup movie, all right. It, it certainly was. <laughs> uh, uh, Mark? Ruthless people. Really? Don't they kill each other and stuff? Yep. Out of that, it's a tie between that and Death Becomes Her. <laughs> oh, oh that was funny. That was great. Yeah. yeah War of the that, War of the Roses. War of yeah, the Roses. Enough, Very enough good movement. one. Very yeah. good. Very good. War of the Roses. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, Rick, uh, any movies come to mind for you? I think you've no everything that, that people have said. You know, Manhattan probably, but um, can't think of anything in particular. What, in Manhattan at the end, I would say that is really a incredible ending to a movie about love okay when he suddenly realizes that all the th with all these women that he knows these sophisticated new yorkers and everything when it comes down to it she's the one he really wants you know because she has she she has an innocence uh and and uh, uh, and a sincere innocence and it has nothing to do with sex or anything else and that he's just obsessed by her at the end and I just, I related to that because I had somewhat gone through it, although not in, in as serious a fashion as he did, you know. Um, and um, then I went with another young woman. That was the one that lasted 11 years. By the time, you know, we were through, she was an old lady, but, you know. <laughs> Sorry um, about that. Um, but, but at least I got, she wasn't, uh, at no point was, yeah, it was funny with her. I never, I knew her and she kept coming by my place and she was, had been a fan, right? And she kept coming by my place and just saying hello and hanging out and so on. And I was just being nice to her, right? And one thing led to another. And finally, one night we got into a position where we could have sex. Uh, I mean, I, I imagine I could have had sex anytime along the way, but we were just in that situation. And I said, but, you know, I can't have sex with you because, uh, uh, you know, you're a virgin. And and uh, I, I knew she wasn't underage because she had just uh, hit 18. And she said, no, I'm not a virgin. You have no f idea how fast I climbed on her. <laughs> it was like it was like she had rang a bell, right? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> like the trumpeteer at the, uh, at the racetrack. Da, 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 da. Uh, because uh, all of a sudden I found out she wasn't a virgin. And that was <laughs> that was all I needed to know. Uh, I, I want to change the topic here. You mind if we do that? Josh yeah, will be happy. Josh will be happy sure with said. this one too, because uh, this is a topic that I think we can all join in on. You know, the other night we were talking about people who make a lot of money uh, and um, maybe way too much money, and we ask why these giant amounts of money are being paid to people. Here's a story for you. Just came out. You know who Les Moonves is? Yeah. yeah. CBS. He is the, yeah. uh, he is the uh, I guess, what is his title? He is... Uh, president? He, I think he's president, president of CEO. CEO. Yeah, CEO. Uh, so Redstone's the chairman still. Yeah, is that the way it works? Uh, yeah. Sumner owns the place. Sumner is the big boss. Sumner will never give up his throne, uh, even though Sumner is probably a bit over the hill now and doesn't even know where he is at times. Can I make one quick point, interrupt, because i got to go, but it was interesting on this Colbert thing. He yeah. went from Viacom, which is a Sumner Redstone property, to CBS. Which so is, it was yeah. a smart move. It, 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 no, it was a move laterally in the same company, basically. And I, uh, I've got, I've, somebody wrote me and told me that uh, probably his show won't start till September of next year. Uh, 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 Dave, I think, will probably be out of there around May. But I think if he's going to use the same theater, which is expected he might, uh, uh, they need to tear down one set, build a new set, you know, move people in, move people out, and that could take several months. And so uh, unless he goes to another facility entirely, he probably wouldn't be on before September. I, I figured he'd want to go to L.A. because Kimmel's and I mean, uh, not Kimmel, but uh, Jimmy Fallon's in New York now. I figured he'd want to... I don't think it really matters. It doesn't matter. You know, the reason they used to do that, okay, 
uh, uh, and the reason it mattered that you were in New York is because you could get all the guests that nobody else had, okay? Uh, because they were all in L.A. and you were in New York. If you were in L.A., maybe you had to fight for it with two other people, yeah. all right? What's, ha what's happening now, nobody's fighting for anything because everybody uh, uh, gets a, uh, how can I put it? Gets the, the people, people, no, no, gets the people their company owns, okay? So if uh, it's a Paramount movie coming out, they're going to give it to Dave because it's owned by Viacom. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they're not going to give it to NBC or ABC, because they're not Viacom. Meanwhile, if Comcast makes a movie over at Universal, Dave's not going to get them, and neither is uh, is Kimmel. But if Disney makes a movie, nobody's going to get them but Kimmel. You get what I'm saying here? Yeah. So that, that's all, true. so the whole thing has really changed. It doesn't matter whether you're left coast or 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 uh, or, or right coast. Uh, all that matters is that you're with the company that can supply the uh, the the people. But okay. anyway, you said you had yeah. to go, um, um, uh, Dave? Yeah, I just got a quick question. Yeah. On, on these movies, uh, the actors and actresses in their contract, are they required to do these promo tours? Yes, like yes. It's part of their mo movie contract. That when the movie comes out, they have to do a, a tour. So they, that's why you see them hoard out for like a week or two, and then you never see them again until the next movie. So is it specific, like they need to put in certain number of appearances? I mean, what, yeah, what... I, I would imagine there's some, you know, there's some contract to that effect. The part of the contract for doing the movie is that you will make a certain amount of appearances in behalf of the film. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, uh, uh, Dave. This will give room for somebody else if they want to call back up, like uh, uh, like Ray Renati, or, uh, or I even saw Miranda was out there lurking. But anyway, here's the story I wanted to give you. Uh, it seems as though it was it was a, a, a bonus time and everything and an accounting time for how much Les Moonves made last year at CBS. Uh, here's what he made. He made. Uh, let's see here. He uh, the, he, he he made. I'm tr look, trying to look at the, at the breakdown here. Uh, he made 3.5 million dollars in salary. Okay, that's all right, right? Mm -hmm. 28 point million in bonus. 28.5 million in a bonus. 26.5 million in stock awards. Uh. 5.8 million option awards. 1.3 million change in pension value. And 1.2 in other compensation. Now, on top of that, that's for a grand total of $66.9 million. But that's not all. What else do we have for him, Bob? $533,527 for car and driver. Oh. And personal oh. use of the company Jet. As well oh. as $531,152 for security. Boy. Uh, uh, <laughs> and he deserves a security. Guy. Well, who's his wife? Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Julie, Chen. Julie Chen. Julie yeah. Chen. Yeah. Julie yeah. Chen. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? No, I was going to no, say Con Connie Chung. No, that that's Con Maury Povich. Not Connie Chung. Yeah. Connie Chung. Julie married Chen. To Maury, Maury. She's on the talk. I wonder. I wonder if she has to take like uh, a DNA test or something. Oh, uh, Connie Chung all the time. Like, <laughs> it, it just there's a joke there somewhere. Forget it. Um, the board credits Moonves with providing leadership and delivering exceptional results, citing CBS's strong ratings, retransmission deals with Time Warner Cable and Verizon, and sales agreements for Under the Dome, Dexter, and The Good Wife. It appears that Executive Chairman Re Sumner Redstone all right, also gets credit for something. His compensation jumped 82.6% to $57.2 million. Believe it or not, the boss of the company is making less than the second guy. Mm. Any comment there, Josh, as you sit there in the dark? <laughs> well, I, I suppose that's a perfect example of what's wrong with this country. I mean, pay someone that kind of money to run a television network, and then basically what they're praising him for is basically uh, for the good television that they have, which he has little or nothing to do with. I mean, someone else creates it, directs it, and acts in it. He just says... 
okay put that on which you know as i said on albert show the other night i could fucking do that from here you're right and then they praised him for uh continuing deals with uh like direct tv or time warner or whoever well that's his fucking job so you know <laughs> i don't really i mean no problem with paying him but my goodness that's that's just a perfect example of what we've got going on well, here. It, it, attached to this article of course were comments and one of the comments was i wonder how many low pay grade cbs employees that could use or want a little raise you know, so, I mean, <laughs> the money has to come from somewhere, and it comes from those people who didn't get a raise. Doug. Yeah, I'm sure, like, if he ran for president, he'd be just like Romney. I'm not going to give you my damn tax returns because I'm sure some way he found some loopholes not to pay any taxes on that damn money there. You, uh, uh, on that money? <laughs> no. Yeah. It's all, it's, you know, they, all the money. that's a public company, so everything is... Everything is above board. His salary is public record, right? So it's kind of hard to hide yeah, that. So. Yeah, you can't hide that. No. Okay, so my mistake. Yeah. But anyway, but no. just sort of like. No, I'm sure he's I mean, saying he's still paying too much in taxes. Then. Well, I mean, a lot of this are stock options, which don't, you know, he if they, he doesn't ca if he doesn't cash them in, he doesn't have to pay taxes on them. Right. And a lot of that plus, too, was in it was in stock. Plus, he gets to go home and fuck Julie Chen, so. You know, that's another bonus. I, I don't know if that's the best thing I would want to do. I don't I like her. I've, I've she seen puts her, me off. I've seen her walking around. Her body is amazing. I, well, that's just me personally. Maybe her husband makes thing. $66 million a year. She can <laughs> afford to get that body that way. She doesn't Absolutely, even have to work yeah. out to do it. They just lie there. She just lies there, and they sew it that way. That's probably right. <laughs> But it looks good. I like it. I sit and watch those CBS shows all day because my mom watches all the soaps and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, it's amazing how Julie Chen keeps working at CBS. Mm -hmm. You know, Gee, it, it, how does that happen? Well, she that, keeps that, getting shows. See, here's the thing. I don't know about you, but if I were like Julie Chen, I don't think then I would uh, do all these shows at CBS. I'd try to get a job at NBC or ABC or something <laughs> so nobody would say, you know how she's getting, yeah. she's fucking the boss. That's how she's getting where she is. Oh, look, there's the pussycat of David. Ha I thought, I what's the, what's the cat's the cat name, David? I the window there for a second. Oh, uh, David's too sexy for What's the pussy? name of the cat? Yeah. Oh, she's my That's retarded cat. Huh? Yeah. She's my retarded cat. Retarded? retarded cat. How's she retarded? <laughs> yeah. All cats are retarded. Yeah. Oh, she behaves like a dog. Oh, really? <laughs> well, what's her name? Lucy. 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 I'm a cat. Lucy. I, I'm a cat guy. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, uh, I, I, I am too. I, I, if I can give you a little yeah. cat, sad cat story of mine. I, uh, I just moved in with my family, you know, I moved my mom in with everybody. And my nephew's allergic, so I couldn't bring my cat, so my kids. But we own the apartment building, so my cat is just sitting there in my uh, old abandoned uh, apartment. And I go there and feed him, but he needs a home, but he doesn't like kids, and he doesn't like anybody, really, except me, so he's hard to get rid of. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, always, I've always liked cats. Sorry to hear. I've always liked cats, yeah, and, okay. I, and I would love to have a cat now, but we live on the eighth floor of a building that, during the summer, we have to open all the windows, and right. uh, I don't think I'd have a cat for very long before, you know... Be a little kid. Cats, cats are actually fairly good at surviving uh, long falls. Th that's great, you know, but uh, uh, eight floors is eight asking times. for a bit much. Fairly good. Yeah. Oh, look, he landed on his feet, but he's much shorter now. Uh, hey, Miranda's going to join us for the last couple of minutes of the show. Good morning, Miranda. How are you? Morning. I mean, You're evening. In New York. I, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever, whenever it is. I, you know, for most of my life, I've done a morning show. And so the natural inclination I have is to say good morning. But good evening. Turn on your camera, why don't you? I think uh, sometimes, see, you know, when you, when you sign in. showing you, that I'm sending oh. it. Yeah, well, just turn it on uh, and off so, again. Uh, I've, I've get seen all us guys here for huh? an hour and 40 minutes. You know, we should... Uh, have Miranda. There we go. Yes. Well, oh, you, up yeah, oh, you know what, Miranda? We, we, you probably heard. Like, you know, cats, you know, um, 
high falls and all that. Yeah. You never see any like cat skeletons in high trees. They eventually get down. <laughs> yeah, they eventually come down. But no, what I here's why I don't want to have one on the eighth floor is because I know maybe they'll go out on the ledge and they can negotiate the ledge and all that. It would drive me nuts. It would just drive me crazy, you know. And uh, knowing me, I'd, I'd buy myself a, uh, a really clumsy cat. Oh, you know, Patrick's trying to call now. One, two, three, four. Right, will you, will will you, will you, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Hey, don't all get ready to go. Stay there. What we'll do is we'll get rid of Jim because he's got to go do a show. Yeah. Okay? Bye-bye. Okay, Bye-bye, Jim. We'll see you in a couple of minutes on your program. Now, let me get Patrick here. Uh, Pat, Patrick. Yes. Have we made you feel any Patrick's. better? All right, can you see me? Not yet, but you're uh, whirring yeah, around, so you should. There you are. Uh, are you are you feeling any better because of all these horrible stories we've been telling tonight? Okay, um, I wasn't able to listen to much because I was doing the family. Uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, Pity party. Up the shrapnel, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Here's the deal. Tomorrow is our Easter because some family members can't make it on actual Easter Sunday. Yeah. So I had to make the phone calls and explain to everybody that I will be showing up solo tomorrow, and here's why. So uh, I had to do all of the... Uh, explanations. Yeah, all the explanation and all that. And uh, basically, I'm the one that ended it because... To go on any longer would have been just, it wouldn't have worked, so. Oh, well, in, 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 in the immortal words of Penn Jillette, I didn't like the cunt anyway, so. Um. <laughs> and in Dave Van Ronk's <laughs> words, kick her in the cunt. <laughs> yeah, I told the story earlier about, uh, about uh, Penn Jillette saying that to me once when I broke up with somebody. And I said, how can you say that? You know, I might be to get back together with her next week. And he said, Nobody wants to hear, hey, she was so sweet, and what a hot woman she was. How could you lose her, you know? Now, here's what I want to hear. Here's what I want to hear. And it might not a, 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 be a story here. But we haven't had a woman on tonight. And Miranda, as you may notice, is a woman. And I'm sure she's had a... Have you had a terrible breakup story? Of course I have. Would you care to share it with, with Patrick so he can feel better tonight? Actually, uh, sure. Okay. Sure. All um, right, everybody sit back, get in your jammies now, and we're going to hear a story. <laughs> <laughs> well, about two years ago, um, I, uh, I had some medical issues that I had to have taken care of. Mm -hmm. And... It involved it, it, it involved a little bit of uh, travel to get out to a specialist and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole bunch of boring details, but right. uh, I recovered, and uh, it just it was a very very long recovery. And I brought up the traveling uh, yeah. for a reason. Okay. About a month after I got back home, mm -hmm. my partner of oh. seven years. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Broke up with me. You'd taken up with somebody else while you were gone, that I guess. W well, <clears throat> this someone else was met while we were away at the specialist. Uh huh. And they live very, very far apart. Um, yeah, it. It was just one of those. Uh, in other words, in other words, you went away to take care of your health. No, both of us, both of us. You both of you went. Yeah. Oh, and so he met somebody there. She met someone there. She she met someone there. Partner. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, that's that's my. Now, how, my did how did like they break? How did they explain this to you when they broke up with you? Hey, I just met somebody while we've been away. I mean, I, I thought this was going to be a story where you went to go take care of your medical problems, and when you came back, you had found out that they were ensconced in a in a relationship. No, um, it, I. It was just. 
it was a strange time. I I still don't really quite understand what happened. Mm hmm. But uh, how did you work past it, or have you? I met someone else. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All uh, right. That always that's, works, right? That's you know, yeah, you know, like it's like you know. Yeah. It just took meeting uh, that first person that gives you hope. Yeah. What I usually <laughs> yeah. say to a woman is, I know you want to leave me. Do you know anybody that can take your place? Uh, you know, that's a, uh, finding somebody helps you forget the last one. But sometimes, how, uh, weren't you worried that that was going to be a, a rebound? Yes. Was it? And I landed in the friend zone. <laughs> you landed ah. in the friend zone. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's we're good. we're really really good friends. Uh, occasionally, a little more flirtatious than we should be, and and it gets a little like. Mm. Friends. Well, you mean we were friends with the old the old uh, love, is what you're saying, or friends? No, with, the, oh, the the the. the, the re you, you, the, I, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking about uh, the the person I had met. No, no. I, well, I mean, I was trying to figure out is the person you met you, who you're talking about that you're friends with. Yes. Oh, yes. I see. Okay, but it's not a romance now. No. Oh, no. Okay. Like I said, I landed in the friend zone. You landed in the friend zone. I've never heard it that way before. That go, uh, goes right along. Okay. With, that goes I'm, right I'm, along I'm, with I'm, conscience, I'm, a conscious uncoupling. Which is the uh, it's like it's yeah. not going any farther. Huh? Don't get me started on that one. <laughs> I'm I'm an expert on getting stuck in the friend zone. I never figured out how to get out of friend zone. What, I, what, what, you got so uh, deep ensconced in friend zone that it was hard to get out of that into where you'd like to be, which is not so friend, more so sex fuck zone. zone. Fuck so zone. So it's a closing thing then, right? It's problem yeah. closing. <laughs> Yeah, right. Exactly. Closing the deal. I oh. found. You know what I found. I. I. Uh, uh, it's the best thing I can say about me. And there are not many good things I can say about me. Uh, if you ever have a chance to get into a relationship with me, go running as far as you possibly can. But if you are, and then we break up, I'm usually pretty good friends with my former lovers. You know. I mean, uh, to this day, I have several old girlfriends. Some who really loved me, and I had to say, no, nah, it just ain't going to work, were just very good friends. And I think that's important to do. I really think that's important to I'm, do. I'm that, I'm that way as well. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Now, have you, I, have, I've, I've been that way myself. Have you noticed Josh tonight, uh, Miranda, sitting in the – look at look at him. He looks like he's a relocation witness, right? In the yeah. shadows. Yeah. You very tell, uh, tell her the uh, the Angels are losing forty two and the Dodgers are winning six to nothing. <laughs> you mean you've been watching the game all while we've been doing the show? I've seen the scores here. I got some on the screen. Yeah, and you haven't shared them with us. Although hey, I, I can't. Wait, I'm you, want, you, want like, uh, you want this to be like what? This to be like sports talk. Well, yeah, you no, want what, this to be like ESPN, where we give you the scores every fucking 15 seconds? Well, you know, but the problem with that is, I think uh, you, we can only do it once every once in a while, because I think otherwise we are we are stealing the game from uh, Major League Baseball, yeah. who is solely really, responsible the for scores? the content of this program. We can't uh, do it without express written consent. Y yeah. No, 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 no the, that's... You can give the scores, you just can't do any play-by-play. -play. Right, yeah. Well, you, you know why that is. I used to have a boss, his name was Gordon McClendon, and he started a thing years ago called the Liberty Radio Network. And what he would do is he would read the line scores from games. People would uh, type out the line score, and so-and-so's up to bat, he misses, he swings. And then he would recreate the game with a guy doing the sound effects, and they had cheers and all of that. And actually, his games were better than the actual games. Sure they were. And, and that's be, illegal. It, well, that, that it wasn't right. illegal then, but after he started doing it, that's why you now see that thing at the end of baseball game saying any recreation of this game is expressly prohibited. Oh. Miranda, um, you you were just saying like you know how can we do how how can we do this? I think you can get around it on a technicality if you're reading it from Twitter. Oh really? I, just as you were telling that story, I just I, I saw the little notification come up from the Dodgers. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> so they were telling you the current score of the game. 
Right, and if yeah. you're just reading something off of uh, off of Twitter, I think I think you're fine. Isn't that what a modern news show is anyway? I think so. Well, now what? Who are you watching there, uh, um, Josh? What game are you watching? I'm um, not. Yeah, well, any in particular, I've got my channel up with. There's eight games on the screen, so I'm just you're multi, looking around. You're multitasking. Going on, See, I, I didn't know that all night long. This guy, this son of a bitch, was watching baseball, and yeah. not one game, eight games. Okay, um, uh, but how you, can you absorb all that information? Because that's Josh. He's a that's he's true. a brainiac. That's all. <laughs> you know, um, uh, 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 Doug. Yes, Doug. Well, the only sport I follow now is like boxing, but it's like really hard to follow because, you know, they used to show fights like on, you know, uh, Saturday afternoons on ABC Sports Spectacular. Mm -hmm. And the big fight coming on tomorrow is the Manny Pacquiao fight. I was going to say, I was going to say to you, my next words out of my mouth were, I don't follow boxing because I don't want to constantly have to watch Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> Because it seems well, every time it seems like, like any time anybody is fighting, it's Manny Pacquiao, or him or Mayweather, which is Mayweather's going to be fighting like a week or two later after that. But like the fights, like you know, probably sixty dollars on pay per view, and the neighbor I usually go in halves with is going out of town, and it's like, oh great, it's like I really, actually I don't even really want to pay thirty dollars to watch him fight, but now my neighbor is going out of town, and it's like, uh. So I'm just trying to, you know, what I want to try to do is to like not watch any news or anything like that. Go on YouTube the following day and go on YouTube and hopefully it's not going to say like Nania <laughs> or, you know, you know or, uh, yeah. anyway, I forget the guy's anyway. name. Uh, he's fine to guess, you know, wins by TKO um, eighth round or something like yeah. that. Okay. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Patrick. So. Uh, uh, any of these stories making you feel better? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, it, 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 it's good to know. I mean, everybody goes through their stuff. Uh, this one was one of those that I dreaded doing because I was the one doing it. Yeah. Um, she's a great person, but it, it, it was almost like it was getting to be the friend zone after about three or four months and I just noticed our paths were going in different directions and for me to prolong it would have been I would have felt worse six months from now than ending it now did you so, use the not you it's me line what's that did you use the <laughs> it's not you it's me line uh no right Right from side you know what line I've used? It's, said, not me, it's, it's not you. me, it's That's you. What I, That's what he says. <laughs> no, I, I, I used it us line. Yeah. And it, 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 it you know, it fell on both sides. And, uh, yeah, I, I saw it coming for a while. And like I said, today just happened to be today. What sucks is tomorrow is a family get together. And, I had to take care of all the fallout from that before I show up, and then there's a million questions. So, oh, oh, oh and plus, uh, my all the women in my family and her were supposed to go to a musical in Chicago next month. Mm -hmm. So I fucked that up for everybody. So <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna get worked out, but you know, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Yeah. I think our night. I think our video is now freezing up uh, on uh, the uh, on the internet. Josh uh, is kind of huh? Josh is kind of freezing up or something. Yeah, but anyway, he's uh, on the dark. Oh no, no, now it's now it's working. Okay, I just wanted to make sure everything was okay there. Um, um, you know, I, I, I guess uh, yeah, this has been a whole. This has been a nice show about love, actually. Uh, um, Unrequited love. Well, you know, I mean, there are a whole other bunch of questions you could have, like the person who got away, you know, that you really should have settled down with that you didn't. Oh, I, oh Miranda I, just smiled. I got uh, a lot of uh, those. Huh? I got a couple. I got a couple I got a, of I those. Got, I got at least one of those that yeah. I, to this day, wonder what my how my life would have been if I had settled down with somebody, but I was too busy. I, I had this one girl in my life, this one woman in my life, the one that I kept saying broke up with me and then 
God, but we'd get back together with me and break up with me and get back together. And she ruined more good possible relationships for me over the years because I kept holding out hope for that one woman that was never going to come to pass, you know, uh -huh. that was never going to happen. And I met up with this one woman once who in every way was wonderful. I mean, I enjoyed being with her sexually. We had a wonderful thing going. And somehow... I, it, in the back of my mind was this woman, and uh, all of a sudden she came back into my life again, and I had to dump the good one. And I still regret that one because she was really a good woman. Uh, uh, Doug? Well, you know, I told you I really didn't have any bad relationships because I've been with my wife for 30 years. But, well, that's enough know, of a four... bad relationship in and of itself, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and, uh, yes and no at, at times. But, you know, she sticks with me. As you know, with all my issues... Uh, She's a very good woman. But it was a girl I was dating who was like very, we'll just say, hmm. you know, just sort of like, you know, you got to work for it. And then, you know, long story short, you know, I got something from her and it, and it was like not really worth it. And then she breaks up with me. Then she becomes a stripper. Sweet. Oh, damn you know, it all. It, it's like, what the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> you made me pretty much practically beg for it. And then when I finally got it, you made it seem like I was like the worst person in the world. And she becomes a stripper. Yeah, but being a stripper and not giving you sex don't come under the same category. One's well, a very smart move. The other on one's one to make time. money. Don't and feel <laughs> bad, Doug. I dated a woman once. Yeah. And when we split up, I ran into her a couple of years later. She had become a lesbian. Well, you're the carrier, I guess, you know, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that crack whore or whatever, you know, it's just. What was that? It's just like, it surprised the hell out of me. It's like, man, you made me, you know, like yeah. practically beg for it. All right. Well, don't, you, you get, you get, you held, a... you've held your bitterness too long. Miranda, you were smiling <laughs> about something and wanted to say something. Oh, no, you didn't? Yep. Oh, I, I was oh. smiling, but I don't want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, you want to say. that. What, what Doug said reminded me of something. There was a girl that I was kind of off and on with when I lived in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And she also had, she had a, a boyfriend at the time. And then, you know, when I, when I got my big chance, when I thought I had my big chance was when she called me to tell me that she discovered her boyfriend was a stripper in a gay bar. So... <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That was great. That and when I heard that, I was like, this is, this is my, yeah, uh, he wasn't gay, but he was just doing it for the money. But still, no. it's, she was freaked out about it. Hey, listen, and we're kind of running out of time, time here. I'd love to get to you, Doug, but we can't. Uh, That's fine. But let me thank everybody for being here this evening. First of all, there's Doug. And then there's the lovely and attractive Miranda. I like saying that because I can't say that about any of these other lugs. What about me? Uh, the lovely and attractive Patrick Blazik, the adorable Dan Meyer, the well, sexy David Hadjik, uh, the, well, we can't see him tonight, so we don't really know what Josh Wheeler is, to tell you the damn truth. Let's go by his picture. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, wonderful, uh, uh, seductive Mark Thorner. Uh, <laughs> I'm running out of adjectives here. Uh, uh, Rick Horn. Uh, or as we like to call him, Rick Horny, and uh, <laughs> Rob, uh, the voice uh, of uh, Gabnet. That was, I couldn't. I, I ran out of all these sexy adjectives. Okay, the cute Rob. All right, how's that? Oh boy. Oh boy. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for uh, having joined us tonight, uh, and uh, stick with me through the end of this thing, uh, so that we can say good night. And I want to thank you all for being part of the part of the program this evening and uh, and uh, taking uh, part in it and, uh, in, and and making my making Patrick feel better about life. Right, thank you. Always. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, everybody. Adios. Thank you for joining me. Weekend, Thanks everybody. to Thank our audience life. listening in. And as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. And good night, everybody. See you later, guys. Okay. Um, let me see.
and that's it